this is a warning concerning our atmosphere. Scientists are saying that Earth's atmospheric oxygen levels continue to decline. This is just uh, the parabolic decline, oxygen decline per cent of oxygen content. And this is, of course, not at all good. We know that our magnetosphere is declining. Nobody knows why, but why is our oxygen declining? Atmospheric oxygen levels have declined over the past one million years, although not nearly enough to trigger any major problems for life on Earth, the new study finds. The research behind this new finding could help shed light on what controls atmospheric oxygen levels over long spans of time, according to researchers. Atmospheric oxygen levels are fundamentally linked to the evolution of life on Earth, as well as changes in geochemical cycles related to climate variations. As such, scientists have long sought to reconstruct how atmospheric oxygen levels fluctuated in the past and what might control these shifts. But models of past atmospheric oxygen levels often markedly disagree, differing by as much as 20% of Earth's atmosphere, which is oxygen's present day concentration, the researcher said. It's not even known if atmospheric oxygen levels varied or remained steady over the past one million years. There was no consensus as whether the oxygen cycle before humankind began burning fossil fuels was in or out of balance, and if so, whether it was increasing or decreasing, the study lead author Daniel Stoppler, geochemist at Princeton University, New Jersey, said. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. In the new study, researchers calculated past atmospheric oxygen levels by looking at air trapped inside ancient polar ice samples. Specifically, they looked at samples from Greenland and Antarctica. The new estimate suggests that atmospheric oxygen levels have fallen by 0.7% over the past 800,000 years. The scientists concluded that oxygen sinks, processes that remove oxygen from the air, were about 1.7% larger than oxygen sources during this time. Although a drop in atmospheric oxygen levels might sound alarming, the decrease the researchers found is trivial in regards to ecosystems. This is what Stoppler told Life Science. He said, to put it in perspective, the pressure in the atmosphere declines with elevation. A 0.7% decline in the atmospheric pressure of oxygen occurs at about 330 feet above sea level. That is about the 30th floor of a tall building. There are two hypotheses that might help explain this oxygen decline over the past million years, Stoppler said. The first is that global erosion rates may have increased over the past few to 10 millions of years due to, among other things, the growth of glaciers. Glaciers grind rock, thereby increasing erosion rates, Stoppler said. Rising erosion rates would have exposed more pyrite and organic uh, carbon at the, uh, to the atmosphere. Pyrite is better known as fool's gold, and organic carbon consists of the remains of organisms, mostly land plants and aquatic photosynthetic microorganisms such as algae. Previous research found that both pyrite and organic carbon can react with oxygen and remove it from the atmosphere. Alternatively, when the oceans cool, as it has done over the past 15 million years, before fossil fuel burning, the solubility of oxygen in the ocean increases. That is, the oceans can store more oxygen at colder temperatures for a given concentration of oxygen in the atmosphere, Stoppler said. Oxygen-dependent microbes in the ocean and in sediments can then become more active and consume this oxygen, leaving less of the element in the atmosphere, he added. Future research can identify what geological processes are consistent with these findings and thus help to identify the major processes that control atmospheric oxygen levels, Stoppler said. These findings also reveal what might be a strange contradiction 
because it could be assumed that atmospheric carbon dioxide levels should rise as oxygen levels fall. For example, right now we are consuming oxygen and breathing out carbon dioxide, said study author, uh, senior author John Higgins, geochemist at Princeton. However, previous research has found that atmospheric carbon dioxide levels have not, on average, changed over the past 800,000 years, Higgins said. At first glance, these two sets of observations, both from gases trapped in ice cores, are paradoxical, he said. One way out of this conundrum is a well-known but relatively untested concept that suggests that on timescales longer than a few hundred thousand years, atmospheric carbon dioxide and Earth's temperature are regulated via a silicate weathering thermostat, Higgins said. Basically, increasing atmospheric carbon dioxide levels will boost the rates at which volcanic rocks wear down and their components wash into the sea, which can then go on to trap atmospheric carbon dioxide in ocean minerals. This means that one can have a change in atmospheric oxygen with no observable change in average carbon dioxide, Higgins said. Importantly, this silicate weathering thermostat is one reason why Earth is thought to have remained habitable for billions of years despite changes in solar luminosity. This was in uh, journal Science and Sound Life Science from uh, Bended Reality. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support.